Michael Jackson and Elizabeth Taylor's friendship was the oddest in Hollywood. Drawn together by their megawatt star power, difficult childhoods and drug problems, the pair's relationship was as intense as it was bizarre. When they first met in 1984, they both had so much in common and felt that they had somebody who understood their troubled lives. Michael became a star at eight years old with his brothers in the Jackson 5. But his father Joe used to beat him so badly he left him mentally scarred for life. Liz became a star at 12 with the film, National Velvet. Despite her father being a drunk who used to quote, back her around, something she rarely talked about. 1983, the year before they met, Liz's career was on the decline just and Michael's was on the rise. She had entered the Betty Ford Clinic for addiction to prescription drugs, but it did nothing to diminish her in Michael's eyes. For Michael, Liz was part of his dreams and the embodiment of Hollywood history. They met six months after the death of Richard Burton, the love of her life who showered her with jewels, and provided a replacement of sorts. Burton died in August 1984 and that December Michael invited Liz to see one of the final dates on his victory tour in Los Angeles. But when the box he arranged for her and her entourage had poor sight lines she left. Michael then called her to beg her forgiveness. Bogle writes that after that they talked on the phone every day then, something magical happened during those phone conversations. Michael and Elizabeth became hooked on each other. On one of their first dates Liz invited Michael over for tea. He asked if he could bring Bubbles with him, his chimpanzee, and she agreed as she loved animals. The pair enjoyed indulging one another's odd tastes. Michael showered Liz with expensive jewelry while she responded by gifting the animal lover an elephant. Do you like to buy jewelry? No. For my mother, Elizabeth Taylor? Yes. Because Elizabeth loves jewelry. Liz provided Michael with a direct, living link to Hollywood history. Michael later recalled, I got to learn so much from her. She'll tell me about James Dean and Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy and Montgomery Clift. She tells me what they were really like. They also bonded over children, loved toys and games and cartoons. Michael described her as playful and youthful and happy and finds a way to laugh and giggle even when she's in pawn. Michael told Liz about how he coped with racism. She told him how to deal with fame. The other thing that bonded them were their medical problems. Michael had burns from a 1986 commercial for Pepsi that still caused him agony. He also had vitiligo which caused his skin to whiten. She had suffered back and hip pain for years. Michael hosted her wedding to construction worker Larry Fertenska in 1991, her seventh husband, at Neverland and insisted on paying the $1.5 million bill. She thanked him by sending him an elephant called Gypsy she had shipped in from Asia. The elephant would in fact feature in Michael's sister Janet's video, Together Again. Michael and Liz caused a media storm when they arrived as a couple at the American Music Awards, with his lost boy quality, with his heightened sensitivity, with his Pepsi accident, even with his use of drugs to dull his physical pain, he was reminiscent of Monty Clift, with whom she shared so much, and perhaps of James Dean and Rock Hudson, all troubled, all conflicted, all trying to come to terms with their childhoods and their fame. With each of them she had felt there were no secrets. While Elizabeth never thought of Michael or the others as weak, she clearly believed she could save people, and perhaps she believed she could help Michael to save himself. Michael became used to Liz's expletive-laden rants which embarrassed him due to his upbringing as a Jehovah's Witness. During the early years of their friendship, Michael loved playing the part of gentleman escort at her beck and call, making sure she was comfortable, making sure any request to a waiter or whomever was taken care of. She was high maintenance, but so was he. In fact, the book says that he enjoyed keeping her high maintenance high. Elizabeth's hold on Michael angered his family, his father because he was so controlling and his mother Catherine because she was wary of outsiders, she once supposedly said that Elizabeth stole my son. It was also under her influence that he moved out of his family home in 1987 and bought the $17 million, 26-acre ranch in Los Olivos which became Neverland. The sprawling property had a number of guest rooms including the Elizabeth Taylor suite which had an enormous king-sized bed. 
Michael supposedly wanted to paint it violet like Taylor's eyes, but the painters could not get the color right. It was in June 1990 when Jackson was being treated for chest pains having collapsed under the pressure of trying to finish the album Dangerous. Michael turned away his own family from his hospital bed because Elizabeth had arranged to come down and see him. Elizabeth's visits lifted his spirits although some family members felt once again that Michael was becoming too close to her, especially when Michael preferred to spend time with her alone. Elizabeth loved A Bug's Life and playfully hounded him time and again to see it with her. They were nearly neighbors, and both had homes in the Bel Air and Beverly Hills neighborhoods of Los Angeles and Michael would invited her over for egg sandwiches in the afternoons. In 1997, Michael presented Elizabeth with the song he wrote for her called, Elizabeth, I Love You, which he performed at her 65th birthday party. In 2003, after Michael was arrested, she went on the attack on his behalf. She said at the time, I believe Michael is absolutely innocent and that he will be vindicated. Michael's death in 2009 nearly destroyed Liz who was dealing with her own health issues yet again. She wrote on Twitter, My heart, my mind, are broken. I'm home from the hospital sore, but intact. Of course, I'm still grieving for Michael. I always will. The two were even united in death and two years later she was buried in the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale, California, the same cemetery as Michael was laid to rest. While Liz was reticent about talking about Michael, he was fulsome in his praise of her. He once said, I can confide in her and trust her. In my business you can't trust anyone, because you don't know who's your friend. Because you're so popular, and there's so many people around you, you're isolated too. Becoming successful means that you become a prison. Elizabeth is also like a mother, and more than that. She's a friend. She's Mother Teresa, Princess Diana, the Queen of England, and Wendy, Peter Pan's soulmate.